All right, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to Train World Live. Uh, today we have a very special episode. The one, the only, Ryan Kunkel. Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, Ken. All right, and I hope everybody is able to see us tonight. We are uh, doing something new, a uh, different live stream. So if everybody out there could just give us a thumbs up and let us know everything is working out okay, I would appreciate it. And uh, I'm not sure if you're able to see us. Well, Ken, I can't see you, but uh, hopefully as long as you can see me and they can see all of us, I think we'll be all right. We'll make this work. And can everybody see us out there? No video. Not good. Um, hmm. Let's take a look. Screen's white out. Okay, let's see. Um... Give us one second as we determine why we're not showing up. Everybody hold on. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And sorry about that. We're still uh, working on some issues, but uh, we got it up and running quickly. Sorry about that. But... Off to a, uh, a rough start, but we're, we'll get it under control. So, Ryan. That's right. that, hopefully, that's the only pitfalls we've got to deal with tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And our episode today is going to be the Lionel New Catalog 120 Years. And um, every year, actually twice a year, you guys come out with a brand new catalog. And mm -hmm. it's like the talk of the town. Everybody's excited, um, you know, amped up, ready for it. And all the forums, all the, the videos, uh, YouTubers out there always discuss it. They want to know what's hot, great, new, exciting. And who better to have on air than you, Ryan Kunkel, to kind of walk us through this catalog? Because this is kind of uh, your, your backyard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, this is the, this is a result of the last uh, six months or so of work uh, from the team at Lionel. Uh, a lot of hours go into this uh, in the company trying to put together a good catalog, a good program of trains. Uh, as you said, everyone looks forward to it twice a year, see what what's coming down the track next. And then about 24 hours later, they want to know why we didn't put certain things in it and want to know when the next catalog's coming out. So. Before that hysteria hits, let's uh, let's capitalize on it and talk a little bit about uh, C2. All right. Sounds good. All right. Should I go ahead and uh, pop that up on the screen here? And Yeah. Can you share it with me? All right. There we go. Hopefully everyone's seeing that. Yep. We got gotcha. you. All right. As, as, as Ken said, this is Lionel's 120th year, uh, which is quite impressive um, for, for any company uh, to make it that long. Any brand to, to last that long uh, is, is a, a good good sign. Uh, we're hoping that it's uh, not even the halfway point yet. We intend to be around for a, a long time to come. Uh, but we've been celebrating that, that all year in a variety of different ways uh, with some special product and uh, other things. We, we've hoped, obviously, to do a few more events and and some fun things like that, but uh, 2020 had other ideas for all of us. Uh, but we're still celebrating, and we're still very much enjoying uh, this anniversary. And I uh, hope that everyone else out there is, is making some good Lionel moments anywhere that they can, anytime that they can, uh, as we get through this uh, this interesting year. Um, but uh, let's uh, go ahead and scroll ahead a little bit here and get to some of the fun product. These are the boilerplate pages that everyone always skips over in a hurry. Uh, but uh, I will point out on our legacy steam page here, please do review these features. These are all the standard features that you'll find in all of our high-end legacy steam locomotives. There'll be a similar page for diesels. And we've added some new standard features this year with the new electronics. 
Uh, we'll be talking about those as we, we talk about some of the locomotives uh, on the pages ahead. But uh, take, take a minute or two and review this after you've looked at all the other shiny objects in the catalog. Uh, come back here and take a look at just how much you get, uh, just as standard uh, in, in our locomotives uh, in the legacy line. All right, first up, we've got the Pennsylvania S1. Uh, this one's generated a lot of interest. Uh, it's a locomotive that we have not um, released, gosh, in a couple, almost two decades now, I think. Uh, this, this has been out, out of production for a long time. Uh, so one that's uh, definitely due for a re-release with some new features and enhancements. Uh, there was only one of these locomotives built. Uh, it was built for the Pennsylvania Railroad in uh, 1939. Um, it, was, it was debuted at the uh, World's Fair in New York. Uh, it ran there uh, on stationary rollers through the duration of the show uh, and then headed out west to run on the western portions of the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, in fast passenger service. It was uh, a big publicity success for the railroad, not so much a big engineering and operational success. Um, within 10 years, it was out of service and, and scrapped, but uh, still a, a neat looking locomotive with the uh, Lowy's industrial streamlining and design on this, uh, paved the way for the, the T1s that followed, uh, and uh, just a, a fun locomotive. And as we know, O-scale guys, you love your big steam engines, and they, they really don't get much bigger than the S1. Uh, this was yeah. actually a longer locomotive than the big boy. So in some dimensions, it, was, it, it could be the biggest engine on your roster. Yeah, and this is kind of like, I, I would think the, the best steam engine in the catalog, I personally think. I mean, other people may, uh, may vote otherwise, but I think this engine is so streamlined looking, so unique, different. And like you said, you guys haven't done this in such a long time that it's really been way overdue. So we're really uh, amped up about it. Yeah, I think this one, this one's going to be be really good. Uh, and it's got some great new features in it too. Um, we talked a little bit about the legacy features we've enhanced. We've we've developed a new uh, main board for our legacy system uh, inside the locomotives, and that that probably doesn't mean too much to a lot of you. And I don't want to get into all the minutia of it. But uh, what that's allowed us to do is to combine a couple of boards into one, which helps keep costs a little bit more in line. It gives us a platform to grow on. Uh, and save space for other things inside the locomotive as we put in more and more features. Uh, and it's also allowed us to put some extra features in there. So one of the, the neatest ones now is with the sounds. Uh, with all of the steam and diesel locomotives that you see in the legacy portions of this catalog, uh, and, and from volume one that came out at the beginning of this year, you'll now have the ability to select between five different horns or whistles, as well as the ability to change the, the pitch of the bell like you could in the uh, Lion Chief app with our Bluetooth engines. Uh, so that's a really cool thing. Uh, the S1 had uh, an air horn. It didn't have a steam whistle. So this one will have a couple of uh, different air horn files, but we're also putting some uh, steam whistle sound files in there uh, just because, you know, why not? Like if you want to choose a steam whistle and have some fun with it uh, and the sound, you can do that. Uh, but not having a, a steam whistle we didn't really have any place to put a whistle steam feature in the locomotive, which is one of our most popular smoke, fe uh, smoke features. So instead of that, we, we dipped back into the vision line book and pulled out the safety valve steam off of the Niagara from a couple of years ago. So you'll have that steam effect on here that as the engine sits and rests for a few minutes, uh, you'll get those pop-offs lifting and, and, a, and a fun plume of smoke out of there. Uh, of course, you can manually activate that effect as well. Uh, and then it, it steams for a while, and then as that boiler pressure cools down, it, it shuts the valves off and, and the steam stops. But a cool feature that uh, this will be the second locomotive that we've put that on. I uh, wanted to give an extra feature in this besides, uh, since we couldn't do the, uh, the whistle steam, and that was a, a cool one to do. Uh, so you get that, you get the new sounds. Uh, we're going to, uh, you know, put the, the, uh, the marker lights and everything on here that we've upgraded as well. Uh, we're doing four different paint scheme variations on this. Two of them are prototypical. Two of them are varying degrees of fantasy. Uh, we've got the American Railroads version uh, at the top of the page there. That will be uh, using the, uh, uh, that's the, the way it appeared at the World's Fair. Uh, then the next one down is the way it looked in service when it entered service. Uh, below that, we have the, uh, the calendar art or the calendar design version. And the, the only difference between that and the in-service version is on the, the front of the locomotive, there's a winged keystone. And if you look at some of the uh, calendar art that the Pennsylvania Railroad had around 1939, 1940, 
there are a couple of images of this locomotive and they all had that keystone on the front, but it never made it onto the uh, production locomotive, at least as far as any of the photos that I've seen of it uh, in real life. But we thought it looked pretty cool and uh, added that on there as a, as a different option. Um, really nice. On here. And then of course, we've got the complete fantasy. We've got the Tuscan Red fleet of modernism version down there at the bottom, which will be a, a great match for the matching passenger cars in the next couple of pages. Yeah, and uh, just carries on the tradition we've had over the last couple of years of doing some fun fantasy schemes that uh, seem sort of plausible, but never really existed and are, are just a lot of fun and have been really good sellers uh, for us overall. So uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, enjoyment and demand for these in the market. That's great. And tonight's episode also, Ryan, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to throughout the whole night just be sharing some great uh, feedback and comments that some of our users um, uh, chime in with. And so it's a new feature we'll just be posting throughout the show. So hopefully it's a little more interactive with our guests. And yes, we'll uh, if your questions do correspond with the uh, page we're flipping through, we'll try to ask Ryan the questions because he's a uh, uh, walking dictionary for Lionel Trains. <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing those things pop, those comments pop up. That's really cool. Uh, that's one of the neat features of this new platform. Uh, I like that. Now, we, now we've got ourselves up and running. It's uh, it's, it's starting to pay off. That that that's it. Ne next time it will be a lot, a little smoother, but uh, yeah. we're we're there. Well, next time you'll have seventeen more people on here with me, so it'll be, <laughs> uh, be even more fun. That's it. All right. So we got the S ones. Beautiful steam engine. Um, I, I think those are going to really do well. And then the next page, you got the passenger cars to match up with it, correct? Yeah, we've got some passenger cars to go along with that. You can't you can't have a locomotive like the S1 and not have a train to pull behind it. So uh, for this one, we did some fleet of modernism cars. Uh, we started off with a focus on the uh, the uh, South Wind uh, passenger train. This is a, a Chicago to Miami train. It's not one that people typically think of uh, when you think of the Pennsylvania Railroad, but uh, it's it was a neat consist, a uh, very different looking consist by Pennsylvania Railroad standards to a, a different sort of design of car, uh, but it matched the tooling that we have very well and uh, hasn't really been given a lot of attention, so we figured why not. So if you want to do the South Wind, we've got the four pack, uh, two extra coaches you can add on and the Station Sounds Diner. Those cars are really popular. They, they add a lot of sound features, a lot of interaction makes running your trains so much more enjoyable. Uh, there's also another two pack of add-on cars. Uh, since this ran from Chicago to Miami, obviously the Pennsylvania Railroad didn't get quite that far south. So uh, the train ran over the Pensy, the Louisville and Nashville, the Florida East Coast and the Atlantic Coastline. Uh, I, think I, I think I caught all of them there on that one. Uh, so uh, in 1947, they started expanding the consist and the other railroads began contributing cars, but they matched the paint scheme with the Pensy, so the train kept a unified look. So we've got the uh, ACL and FEC uh, add-on cars there as another two pack that you, you can grab. Uh, and one of the things I like about this train and trains like this that ran over multiple railroads is if you're an L and N guy or you're a, a an FEC person, you can put some Florida East Coast E6 diesels on the front of this train, and it is perfectly prototypical. Uh, you can put a nice LNN steam locomotive or some E7s on here, and it's going to look right at home. So you got a lot of options. You know, I know there's a lot of O-gauge guys out there. You've got more locomotives than you have rolling stock. Here's a great chance to just swap out. You could keep on going. All right. Uh, we've also got a couple of other add-on cars there. We've got a B60 baggage car and an RPO car in the fleet of modernism scheme and a two-pack of heavyweight Pullmans. Um, this South wind itself grew and shrunk a lot uh, over the years as you had more people moving to the uh, South in the winter and so forth. Uh, so it was a very seasonal train in terms of the size of the consist. Uh, and then these cars were also and this paint scheme was adopted to other uh, lines as well. And although the fleet of miners and paint started to die out around 1947, 49 or so, uh, there were several cars that lasted well into the 1950s in the, the more elaborate paint schemes. So, if you're a, a modeler of other times and places on the Pensy, you know, the two pack of Pullman's is a great way to sneak in one of those older cars uh, and just add a little bit of variety to your uh, to your Broadway Limited or your Jeffersonian or whatever other train you might be running uh, over the line. Uh, and they're a, a, a quite a complex paint scheme. So anytime you can get one of those things factory painted and not have to do the decal work yourself, 
that's a win. Sounds good and looks beautiful. And uh, Martin out there, uh, the S1 deserves a closer look. Hope to see some samples in future Facebook Lives. Kind of excited about that monster. Well, Absolutely. Yeah, as soon as we get some uh, some samples over here, we'll get that up there, Marty, and uh, we'll be showing that one off for sure uh, on on layout on our test layouts and whatnot back at the office. And uh, you know, I think what's neat about that engine is it would look cool sitting on your desk on some rollers on just a piece of track like it did at the uh, World's Fair. Yeah, uh, if you don't have a big layout, it'll run over seventy two curves. But even if you don't have that kind of space and just want a really neat showpiece, you know that that makes a, an ultimate coffee table ornament right there. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the smaller engines because no sooner do we start talking big steam than we hear from everybody who says, I need something smaller. I don't have, I have a four by eight. I don't have a, a 40 by 80. Uh, so we do try and, and mix that up a little bit and put some uh, smaller and mid-sized steam in each catalog as well. And the 460 is back this time uh, in a lot of really great color schemes on this one. Uh, and I've, I've heard a good bit of buzz about this too. This is a really nicely proportioned engine uh, with all the legacy features in it, you get whistle steam in it now for the first time. Uh, you get all those sounds, the, the rail sounds, the high end. You know, our sounds are the best in the in the hobby for sure, and people just will, will go go crazy over that. Um, this locomotive looks right at home on tighter curves uh, with with shorter trains. Freight service, passenger service, both of them are are perfectly good. Uh, we've got a couple of engines on here that are still around today. Uh, we've got some that did some excursion service in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we've got uh, you know, a variety of prototypes. It's based on a New York Central engine, uh, but they were very similar locomotives on a lot of railroads. So uh, the Reading and Northern, I've, I've heard a lot of compliments on uh, from people. Uh, we've got the uh, Canadian Pacific 972. That was one of George Hart's engines. Uh, that did a lot of excursions. And we have uh, that'll come with extra magnets to put on the tender for some of those different trips over the, uh, the Cumberland Valley and the, the Philadelphia and Reading uh, when it was relettered. Uh, the Texas and Pacific, another beautiful, that, that uh, green and, and red, uh, and the Southern as well. Those colorful locomotives always jump right out at you. Uh, but we've tried to, tried to mix this up uh, pretty good. Uh, the Southern did actually paint a couple 460s in the, in the green paint scheme, so we wanted to do that. Uh, we've got the Sioux line in there. Uh, it's not a railroad that we hit with steam very often, Rutland. Uh, really good looking Rutland steam engine. So uh, a couple of railroads we don't do in every catalog and nice to, to feature some, some different engines here at a, uh, a lower price point and a smaller minimum curve and, and, and still give you all the, literally all the bells and whistles of, of legacy. And Ryan, so I, I personally think the two biggest winners of what we're going to sell the most on it, because people love color. The Reading and Northern is going to be absolute dynamite, going to do very well, and Southern mm -hmm. and Texas Pacific. I, people, I guess for the past couple of years, they've just been flocking to colors. And, you know, they, they want more of a variety of trains on their layout. So I think they'll do very well. And um, Angela Trotta Thomas actually wanted to know if the catalog length of uh, – nine and a half inches is approximately correct. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a missing number on there. These are 19 and a half inches. Uh, okay. So okay. yeah, they're, they're a little bit bigger than that. They're, they're, they're O scale. Uh, I wonder if that's the real <laughs> Angela Trotta. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> oh, only Angela would, 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 would catch that. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in, Angela. Thanks, Angela. But uh, very cool. All right, let's uh, let's skip ahead to uh, go back back and get bigger again. Here we've got the the two eight eight twos. A lot of variety of road names on these. Uh, these are based on a USRA design, which was also based on the Norfolk and Westerns uh, Y three. So we've done a lot of variations in this from railroad to railroad. Uh, most people associate this this model with the the N and W, but uh, they sold some of their own to Santa Fe and. Uh, Pensy and others, and then the USRA design, which said it's pretty much an identical uh, locomotive, it found a variety of buyers as well. So we're bringing this one back in some new road numbers and familiar road names, as well as a few new road names. Uh, this will be the first time for these with, uh, with the new Legacy. This will be the first time with the Bluetooth feature, something we haven't talked about yet. All of the Legacy locomotives uh, are equipped with Bluetooth now. 
So if you like the bigger steam engines and bigger diesels, uh, but haven't bought a legacy command control system uh, and just want the basic functions, uh, but like something that's still very easy to use and convenient, you can run these with the universal remote uh, and you can run these with the uh, Lion Chief app. You can download for free and put it on your tablet or your, your cell phone uh, and have a lot of features unlocked right there. So you get the best of both worlds uh, with our legacy engines right now. And it's given us an opportunity uh, to, to provide some things for that audience that likes the bigger power, but also likes just a more simple control system. And uh, that's where you, you get the best of both worlds now with, with legacy and our Lion Chief Plus 2.0 that we'll, we'll get to later on. Uh, one of the NNW versions we're going to do here will be weathered by Harry Heike. He's done a lot of work for us over the last couple of years, typically, typically about one engine a catalog now. We, we put in here uh, that we'll send to him once they arrive, and he'll do the weathering. Uh, he does a great job. Each one's done by hand. So while he's very consistent from model to model, no two are ever going to be exactly the same. And uh, it's a, a great way to add that touch of realism, especially on a workhorse engine like this that um, really gains a lot. The, the small details and things on these boilers and uh, underframes and whatnot, they really start to pop out when you get a little bit of color and contrast in there and don't see it all just as one big field of black. Uh, so a lot of, lot of potential in that one. Uh, we've got the early NNW version over here as well that uh, hasn't been done uh, previously. Uh, B&O is a new road name, uh, some other NNW and Santa Fe. And then uh, the next page over, we get some more. We've got Clinchfield, Rio Grande, Northern Pacific, Pensy, Union Pacific, and Virginian, and they're as delivered with the uh, USRA tender on there. Uh, as you notice, we've got different tenders on these models. Some have dog houses, some don't. We've got flying air pumps on the smoke box, uh, different number board arrangements on the engine. So we are varying the details up from road name to road name to make them as uh, close to the specific railroad and specific prototype as possible. Uh, yeah, so I, I noticed on sales a lot of times that people like the doghouse. It's um, it, it, an interesting thing, and you know, people want a, a little different, something to put on the layout that has that little bit of uniqueness. Yeah, it's just a fun little detail. Uh, a lot of railroads didn't use them; some did. Some some used them sometimes, and not others. Um, so, anyone where we put it on, we have a, a photo to match that the doghouse was there. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just a neat little detail and a, a fun little little thing on the tenders. Very cool. And then we've also got a return of the uh, USRA light Mikados. Uh, we see these a lot. This is another one that has an incorrect length in the catalog. It's not 30 inches long. Uh, it's a hair over uh, 20 inches, but the 036 minimum curve is correct. Uh, so you will be able to run this on the tighter curves again. Uh, we've got a couple of survivors in here. We've got the uh, Southern 4501 and we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the uh, Grand Trunk 4070. I believe actually ACL uh, 823 is in the park uh, somewhere as well. Uh, so not operational, but still still around. Uh, and picked a few, again, different road names that we haven't done before on this locomotive uh, and that we don't always do very often. Lehigh and Hudson River, uh, the Ramona and the uh, Georgia Railroad, Wabash for steam is not one you see all the time. So picked a few different road names uh, on this locomotive. The neat thing about this is every railroad had these consol or these Mikados. So uh, you got to have at least three or four or five on your layout uh, to do it justice. And um, Peter wants to know, do you know if they'll have road name uh, specific details? There will be some road name specific details on these, um, depending on uh, on the road. Uh, things like the, uh, the, the trailing truck, for example, is one of the bigger details that will change out uh, based on this. We did a few things on the, uh, the smoke box front as well with uh, bell and uh, bell placements and so forth. So uh, as much as we can with this older tooling, uh, we do change up the details and uh, make it as, as customizable as we can. And e EO Triplet has a, a very long uh, question that uh, it, it's too too long, EO. <laughs> but um, uh, with the sounds, um, w will it have a a Southern chime whistle used on the uh, legacy Southern Mikados, or will the bell be more like the USRA Mikados? You, you know, kind of the Yeah, same. so again, this is kind of the fun part, right? Especially with an excursion engine like the 4501, 
uh, or some of the other bigger excursion engines that we've done, those things are typically getting new whistles on them all the time. It's a, an easy thing to change on a, on a prototype locomotive. Uh, so you often hear those with different sounding whistles. And with the new sound system, we'll put five different whistles in there. Uh, one of them will be a Southern Chime for sure. Uh, we'll, we'll mix it up. Uh, so when we can go and get recordings of, actual, of the actual locomotive and those whistles, that's usually what we try and match it up to. Uh, with the excursion engine, sometimes it, it up till now has been very difficult because you listen to one video and it sounds like a high pitched you know squealer, and then you know six months later it sounded like a steamboat. You you never knew what, which one to go with. But now we can put a variety of pitches in there, and you can choose the sound file that you want. And of course, they're all still quillable with, when you're using the legacy remote, so you can still vary that and play the whistle. Uh, and then with the bells, again, we will have that where you can change the pitch of the bell. So. If it sounds a little too low to you, you can raise the pitch. If it sounds too high, you can bring it back down again. Uh, really easy to do with the, the legacy cab uh, and, and adds another level of uh, action and fun to the, to the trains that we haven't been able to give you before. So I'm really excited about bringing that feature out uh, in all of our legacy locomotives, uh, starting uh, with engines we'll be delivering later this year. Very cool. And I will say EO has a great response. I'm sorry, I'm a rivet counter. <laughs> no problem, EO. Sorry, I couldn't read your whole message. Uh, the uh, platform just, uh, it, it was too long for it. But um, the Steam channel, uh, Chris, how you doing, Chris? He also wants to know uh, when, when they're due. I uh, don't have a finished production schedule on these yet. Uh, but that's a good good question just for overall. Um, okay. orders, orders on these will be due uh, towards the end of August. Uh, August yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we'll be putting in our orders with the factory uh, a couple weeks into September after we get all of our dealer's orders uh, and put everything together and, and add up the numbers. Then we send over the, the requests and the, the orders to and purchase orders to the factories uh, overseas. And then, uh, then once they have the total order numbers in hand, then we'll start to get uh, a schedule. So at this point, I can't give you an exact date or even an exact month on uh, the Mikados. Uh, it will all depend on what order in the, the program they get slotted. Uh, but we expect the factories to be able to start building some of these locomotives before the end of this year. Uh, and all of them delivering sometime between uh, the first months of 2021 and uh, you know, May, June of 2021, sort of on the tail end uh, as, as things go. So until we know the exact factory order of things, it's hard to give you a production schedule. We'll have that update probably uh, towards the end of September, mid-October. Uh, it will be when we can give you a, a better sense of when everything from this catalog should be coming. Uh, but our goal is everything in this catalog out by the uh, middle of next year. Some things will be earlier than that for sure, but uh, that's, the, that's the late end on it. Sounds good. And uh, this comment is for Dave. Just uh, P Peter says, I miss Dave. Is, is he still working for Lionel? And yes, he is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, we, we would not let Dave go, uh, no matter how hard he struggled. Uh, Dave, is, <laughs> Dave is in the, uh, he's working in the office. As you can tell, I am, uh, I'm at home right now. Uh, with everything going on, the uh, the team is very, very spread apart. We're, we're, we're playing, uh, Practicing safe, safe uh, work practices so that no one gets gets sick, and we can we can all get through this. So uh, some of us are back at the office with all the testing and everything Dave has to do on product and new designs and so forth. Uh, he really needs to be in there. I can do a lot of what I need to do from the safety part. So uh, we we've split up a little bit for right now, but he and I are in contact with each other throughout every day and uh, and still having fun. And we will get the band back together here. At some point, uh, Dave and the eccentric crank shall, shall rise again, and uh, we will we will have another another show for you. But Dave is doing quite well. Uh, I know everyone misses him. Uh, yeah. He misses all of you guys and sends his best regards. And uh, he and I both can't wait till we can back to be back doing this side by side and uh, making you all hate us again. I mean, they, there's a rumor floating around that he moved to Hollywood. But um, I, I guess we could can that on this episode right now that he did not go to Hollywood. He's not doing commercials. He's just, uh, you know, uh, hanging a little more low key. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they finally got out of California. So I don't think he's in a hurry to go back to, to Cali. But uh, uh, 
Uh, and and com commercials are way beneath him. I, you know, that's, <laughs> I, I, I can't see himself stooping to that. I, I, I get asked to all the time, and I just, you know, you, you got to turn it down. It's it, it cheapens the Lionel brand for us to be out there doing that. <laughs> I don't know. They must love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. my gosh. Not, all not right. Well, let's uh, move on to diesel. Move on into some diesels here. Uh, again, as we mentioned with the steam engines and their sounds, the diesels will have uh, five different horns uh, as well. I'm going, oh, my gosh, we want uh, Dave and Ryan figures <laughs> in the cab. We're, we're going to have to go to G-Gage for that. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll put the recommendation with Howard. <laughs> uh, I, I guess we're going to have to get the get the folks to start painting beards on the, the crew. Uh, the E7s, uh, great locomotive, the, the most popular selling prototype passenger diesel engine of all time. Uh, so a great locomotive that uh, there's really no shortage of road names on and paint schemes. And we've done some fun varieties here uh, and some new things and new configurations. So most railroads ran these in an AA or an ABA configuration. Um, some railroads ordered them with a single uh, cabbed A unit and then two B units. So depending on the, the prototype for these paint schemes, we've mixed them up a little bit in, in how they're offered. You can either buy them as an AA set or an AB set, depending on which is appropriate. And then there's the add-on B unit for those who want uh, the extra locomotives uh, sound in this case. So for the AA or AB sets, both units are powered. Uh, you get the four, four motors and all in this. Both units have smoke. Uh, and of course you have all the lighting features that are applicable as well in, in each locomotive, including uh, Mars lights where appropriate for the different road names. Um, and then the lead A unit will have sound uh, and the trailing A or B unit uh, in those sets will not have sound, but it has all the other features. Then for those who really wanna kick the sound up a notch, we've got the super bass B unit. Uh, and this is a, a non-powered locomotive with smoke and then a super bass sound system in it where the sounds have been tuned uh, and the speakers tuned for a much uh, deeper, beefier bass uh, tone in there. And when you put one of these in the consist, it makes such a noticeable difference in the overall sound of the, the locomotives that you're running. Uh, and really feels like you're sitting right there beside a, a real full-size diesel. Uh, so it's a really fun feature. Uh, and if you're running uh, other consists of legacy E units, uh, in a lot of these cases, it was not at all uncommon to see E7s and E6s or E8, E9 uh, locomotives mixed together. So uh, an E7B unit in between a couple of E6s or a couple of uh, an E8, uh, completely uh, accurate from a, a railroading standpoint and gives you a chance if you've already bought some other E units and just want to kick the sound up a notch, get one of these matching uh, super bass units and throw it in there. Uh, and really have a, have a new experience with the sound and run, run flawlessly for you. So uh, for some of these roads, we've done that, uh, th done similar paint schemes in the past. Uh, the city of Los Angeles UP, uh, this will have, it doesn't really show in the catalog, uh, this will have a, a slotted pilot on the front. This and the New York Central locomotives were really early production E7s, and uh, they are uh, a, a very unique detail that really adds a lot of character to the front. So I'm anxious to bring those out uh, on these models and, and give you a more accurate city of LA or uh, early New York Central locomotive. Um, got those here on this next spread. Lion We're doing two, two different New York Central. You got a question there for, for us, Ken? No, a lot, I was just gonna say a lot of good pain schemes. Yeah, so we've got uh, the two different New York Centrals. These were both the early uh, as delivered paints, the all black, and then the, what we now sort of call the reverse two-tone gray, but this was the, the, the original version of that, where the band in the center of the locomotive was darker than the, the, the rest of the car body. Uh, really attractive locomotives. I'm surprised how nice just the all-black engine really pops here with those stripes and then the red oval no, uh, logo on the nose. It, it's a really striking paint scheme for something that's all black. Uh, it's sort of like the BNSF. Uh, GS4 that we did uh, in the C1 catalog. You think all black locomotive versus a daylight paint scheme, you know, ah, it's going to be drab, but it, it just has a nice classy uh, regal look to it that, that uh, I really like on these engines. Right. And then uh, for Pensy, uh, we're bringing back the uh, the five stripe, five stripe uh, Tuscan red. 
Uh, I've had a couple people ask me if this will be as, as bright a red as the PAs. Now, we're going to tone it down a little bit more on this run. Uh, it should match the previous E8s uh, that we have done. And then we also did here, again, uh, two different variations of the Super Vase B unit. So those who have some of the later paint scheme E8s could also grab the single stripe version uh, and put that in between them. The Pensy never owned an E8B, so if they wanted an ABA combination, it was always uh, an E7B in the middle of the, the consist. So uh, for those Pensy guys out there who've been looking for something like that, now now's your chance to get not only the right looking consist, but a great sounding one as well. Very cool. To go with the uh, New York Central, we've got some, um, some matching passenger cars there as well. Uh, ever since we did the Niagara, we've been getting a lot of requests for New York Central two-tone 21-inch uh, passenger cars. Uh, and so here's the first batch of those. We'll definitely do some more of these down the road. Uh, I, wanna, I do, in my long-range plans, have it in there to do uh, a more accurate 20th Century Limited. Uh, but I, I don't think a train like that deserves to have uh, a Pensy observation car or a UP observation car slapped on the back in two-tone gray. So we'll wait till we get the, the tooling and the budget to do that, that train up right. Uh, but for those looking for some good looking New York Central uh, streamlined cars to go behind the E7s or your Hudson or your Niagara or whatever the case may be, uh, we've, we've done a few New York Central engines over the years, so you've got some options there. Uh, this is a great train that's based on the Southwestern Limited, which was a New York to St. Louis train sort of a, a rare market for the, the Central. They, they didn't play that, that channel too well and ceded most of the business to the Pensy, but uh, this was a unique train that changed a lot in consist over the years and over the, the course of its run. So typically it didn't have an observation car because about every city and town on the way, uh, they were taking a Pullman off and putting a different car on. And the, uh, the train was constantly uh, changing as it made its way along the line. So a real fun train from a, an operation standpoint, if you're somebody who likes passenger operations. Uh, but we've got the uh, four pack of, of uh, 21 inches. We've got a two pack and then a station sound Steiner as well. Uh, also, although it's not new, new, uh, we have them back in the catalog. But we still have a few of these in stock at the office. Uh, the Vision Line uh, baggage car. And you'll see this in a couple of other SKUs. We brought back some new ones in volume one this year. This is a really fun car. Uh, it's sort of like the station sound steiner in that it uh it plays the this clickety clack sounds as it's in motion but then when you get to a station and activate the sounds you get a variety of loading and unloading sequences uh out of these and um uh, i'll just say that dave and i had some fun writing some of the the comments uh for this uh, and the dialogue in there you know those rea cars could carry anything uh, and and uh, there's some great stories uh, that have been recorded down of of uh, things that went in and out of these cars. I don't think we included this one in the, in the dialogue, but I uh, remember a volunteer at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania telling us about a time that a, uh, they were carrying a, a lion uh, from New York to Washington for the zoo, uh, and it escaped uh, in the baggage car. And in Baltimore, they had a very panicked express agent uh, up in the cab of the GG1 with them. Wow. So, uh, you know, there, there's some great prototypical uh, anecdotes about that. And we had a little bit of fun with that in the in the sounds here. So uh, right. a really cool, cool train and a cool accessory to add in there in a variety of paint schemes. So uh, just one more thing to add some play value and, and fun and excitement to your, your trains. And then we've got a couple more E7s here. Uh, these go back with uh, additional cars that we cataloged the first time in C1 with our Streamline GS series of Southern Pacific locomotives. We've got the Rock Island and the Southern Pacific E7s from the Golden State. Uh, of course, uh, the SP engines were pretty much dedicated to that train in this paint scheme. The Rock Island locomotives, you could see these on a variety of, of Rock Island trains, uh, not just the, the Golden State, uh, but some really great paint schemes there that you don't see done very often. Uh, and then the it's a fantasy paint scheme, but the Southern Pacific Lark as well. We've done the daylight uh, E7s and, and e eight so much in the past. Uh, we did a two-tone gray GS, I think we did a GS4 or GS3 for the, uh, uh, in the Lark paint scheme uh, to match the passenger cars and we wanted to do some diesels as well because it, it really looks nice. It's a, a very classy paint scheme even in the other colors. Uh, the SP just used daylight colored locomotives on that train, but if you want a nice matched consist, this is a great way to get it. 
so some some more fun there. We've got those those cars recatalogued as well. Uh, I know we've, we've we ordered some extras on these, expecting to recatalog them. So uh, you guys at Train World can can continue to order them from us as, as you get more orders uh, coming in. We've got the Golden State, uh, and we've got the whoops, we've got the Lark as well. Wi-Fi camera on the. Uh... What is the Vista Dome you have it in? Yeah, so we have our, our Vista Vision Dome cars. This is a fun one. We uh, we got a sample of these in uh, earlier, actually about a week ago, uh, and we're testing it out. And the, the picture quality of these is great. Uh, the We mounted the camera right in the front of the zone. So it's right, uh, actually this would be in the front side of the car. So it's right here in the front, just behind the window. So you don't get a lot of glare uh, on these. And it, it feels like you're sitting in the dome car of the passenger train, you see the, the rest of the train out ahead of you. Uh, you see the smoke coming out of the, the locomotive at the front of the train. And as you're going around curves, you, you see the train going in, you know, in and out of curves. It's a really fun uh, perspective on the railroad. And it's super easy to use. You don't need to uh, hook into your home Wi-Fi or anything like that. It's got its own Wi-Fi device in there. You download the app. You pop it up on your screen, connect to the camera. And I mean, I even figured out how to do it. So it's pretty easy. And Everyone will tell you when it comes to this technology and computer stuff, I am I'm a neophyte. I, I just go back to my, my books and my paper and uh, like to do things the old fashioned way. But if I can figure out how to make a Wi-Fi camera car work, uh, these guys are out there putting up all these great YouTube videos with cab rides and, and so forth with your GoPros. This is a great way to do it uh, really easy uh, and, and have a lot of fun. Yeah. When this first came out on your cabooses, the amount of pre-orders and sales we got on just on the cabooses were mm -hmm. extraordinary. So I, I know people who just want to run the passenger cars. This is perfect for them. Yeah. Yeah. Really neat, neat, neat car. I, I really like the way the dome car turned out. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, glad we, we shoehorned that camera in there. Yeah. All right. Let me go on here. All right, next up, we've got the gen sets. Um, a lot more positive discussion about these since the catalog came out than, than I initially expected. I was a little worried about this one. Uh, sometimes switchers are a, a hard sell, but this is a locomotive that hasn't been in the catalog very often. Uh, I wanted to do another modern engine, uh, but you know we've been running a lot of SD70s and ES44s over the last couple of catalogs, so I wanted to give them a break, uh, put something in a little bit different. And uh, so we've got the gen set. We're making several changes uh, and design improvements in this model to bring it back this time. Uh, and I know there's been some questions about that too. Uh, we want to increase its, its pooling power and make it a better runner. So we're going with a dual motor design and a plastic uh, body over the die cast. Uh, we are looking into uh, a, a changing slide so that we can move headlights as well. Uh, making this new tool will allow us to do that pretty, uh, pretty easily, we think. Um, there, are, there will be some interior details we won't be able to include off of the previous version because of the second motor, uh, but as a trade-off for that, if we can put the headlights up above the windshield on the, the versions where that's correct, uh, we'll do that. It'll make a big big improvement in the, the look of the locomotive over previous runs. Uh, should run well. This will have a single smoke unit in it that will uh, put smoke out of all three stacks at the same time. Uh, so the first version had was the Vision version where you got smoke out of the different uh, smokestacks depending on how hard the engine was working uh, and they would shut off and on automatically uh, and uh, it ended up being a, a nightmare for our service department because a lot of them came back with people saying that their smoke units wouldn't stay running um, and it was performing as designed so uh, in subsequent engines we we uh, we switched over to a single smoke unit and piped it to all three uh, gives it to sort of the, the look everyone expected and also three separate smoke units inside a body that small does does make it interesting so it simplified things and I think gives a, a very nice result. Uh, we've got some, some great returning prototype paint schemes, a couple of fantasies here, but in, in some colors that uh, are sure to grab attention. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things on the Bethlehem Steel. That's always a great road name for us. Uh, and then Union Pacific, and surprisingly, you and I were talking about this a little bit before, the, the graffiti paint scheme uh, really winning over a lot of people. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but if you see these out in in service now or for the last uh, 10, 15 years out in Los Angeles, they are all completely covered. Uh, and this is what, what they look like. So uh, we even found a photo of one that had legacy spray painted on the, uh, the fuel tank. So we copied that over here for, for this model. It's prototypically accurate legacy graffiti. I thought that was kind of a, kind of a neat thing. 
uh, if, whether or not you like graffiti, it's a, it's a neat piece. But we've got the clean one there, too, if you prefer a, a, a more pristine railroad. Yeah, it, it's funny, Ryan, because a lot of people I was reading a, a forum and um, they, they weren't sure if that was, you know, it, uh, an actual train like that had actual that much graffiti. And uh, someone actually posted, you know, a picture of the real one. And it, it did, you know, it looks very similar. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it was interesting. And I, like you said, some people like it, some people don't, but you have both options. Uh, it's definitely different and unique and a lot of, I already see the orders and a lot of people are uh, jumping on it. So, yeah, we, we try our best to copy the graffiti pretty closely. It's not, it's not exact, uh, off of the prototype. Uh, but in some ways this one, our model is actually cleaner than some of the ones that you see out there. Uh, if you look at it, if you look them up on the web, you'll see, you can even see them changing over time. There's graffiti over graffiti, uh, on these things. So, uh, interesting is, is one way to, is, is how we'll leave it but uh, if you like it hey it's a heck of a lot easier than trying to do all that artwork on your own with yeah decals or or, or or light paints very cool all right uh turning the clock back we've got some gp7s here in the catalog uh, again a, a nice variety of paint schemes uh we've got uh santa fe in the blue and yellow uh, we've done this a couple of times in the zebra stripes we want to do a later paint scheme this time around uh, Maine Central, Northern Pacific, Seaboard, Texas and Pacific, and Cotton Belt. So again, not, not always your typical list of road names and paint schemes in the Lionel catalog here, but some really attractive ones uh, nonetheless. The, uh, the Cotton Belt Daylight uh, paint scheme is prototypical. Uh, they only had one GP7, but they gave it two different numbers, so both numbers are correct. And if you want to run them at the same time because you like to have multiple unit lash ups, yeah, go for it. Quite honestly, I don't I don't recall any manufacturer really running that paint scheme ever. Uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's one that gets overlooked far too often. Yeah, very neat. Uh, and then we get into our sharks, and there've been a couple of uh, popular ones here. Some good comments on these. These haven't been uh, they haven't been around in a while. They they come up maybe maybe been what uh, 2012 or 13? I think these came out last. Uh, so a number of new paint schemes, some of them real, some of them fantasy uh, on here, uh, some that have been long awaited, I'm sure, uh, and, and others that I think people are, are just as happy to see, but kind of surprised to see. Uh, the EJ&E is a, one that we don't hit very often, but a, a prototypical paint scheme uh, there. The, uh, the Santa Fe War Bonnet, not at all correct, but it looks fantastic on this, this car body, and uh, we think it'll do pretty well because... You could put the war bonnet on a brick and uh, and, and sell it without any problem. So uh, we've got that there. We've got the Baldwin Demonstrator, one of the, the neater paint schemes and the neater demonstrator paint schemes, I think. And the cool thing about that is uh, if the railroad you model never had sharp nose diesels, they could have uh, they could have tested them. So you can run this on, on any layout uh, and enjoy it. And then we've got the Monongahela. Uh, one of the last operators of, of these engines, uh, another road name that uh, has really never been done on these by any anybody. New York Central in the later cigar band scheme. Uh, we've done them multiple times with the uh, with the, the uh, lightning stripes and so forth. We we went with a later paint scheme here. The the Pensy in two versions. We've got the single stripe uh, green scheme. Uh, we've only done five stripe in the past, uh, and it was very common on the Pensy that you would see five stripe and single stripe sharks mixed together. So if you've got some five stripes and want to get a, a couple of single stripe B units, go for it. They'll, they'll match in your consoles perfectly. They, the Tuscan Red version is a, a little bit different. Uh, the Pensy had some Tuscan sharks, but they were six axle engines. They were a much larger locomotive than, than these. Uh, and where we went with this was, uh, you know, we get a lot of people who, who like the bigger diesels too, but if you have tight curves, they look a little bit awkward running around a sharp curve. So the uh, using the, the four axle sharks sort of gives us a, a baby uh, BP-20 here. And you can run these on your 031 curves with shorter passenger cars. And you've got the right look. They'll look in place uh, even though it's a, a shorter uh, shorter engine. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a, you know an 027, but all, all in a scale size locomotive. So that was our thinking on that one. Uh, and then another one, we've gotten a lot of, of feedback on is the U.S. Army set there at the bottom of the page. Uh, doing sharks and not having a shark's mouth on one of these engines just seemed 
silly. So we had to do something, and this was a great way to do it, inspired by the uh, World War II aircraft, uh, the P-40 uh, art. The uh, the nose art for this right behind the, the cab there is the Baldwin Bell. Uh, so we had we had a lot of fun designing these and, and come up with that paint scheme. The, uh, all the Sharks will be available in a, an AA set with both units powered. Uh, just like the E7s, first unit has sound, the second unit does not, but they both have smoke and lights. Uh, and then you've got two B units. You've got a powered B unit that you can add with uh, the motors and the smoke, and then a super bass B unit uh, that's not empowered, but like the uh, E7s, you've got the smoke unit in there, so all of your engines will have smoke coming out, which is what you'll want in a lash up of Baldwin diesels. Uh, and then you'll have that super bass sound plus sound in the A unit. Uh, if you've got some of the earlier sharks, again, grab a super bass B unit and mix it in there in the consist. It was not at all uncommon on a railroad to see some paint schemes mix and match and, uh, between, uh, between the engines in, in later years. So uh, I'm hoping that that helps people, uh, you know, who may just may already have some things but want to expand their current lashup, gives you an excuse to do it. Uh, yeah, and, and Ryan. The, uh, the U.S. Army Shark is probably going to be one of your best-selling sellers in the catalog. Really nice, neat, different, exciting. I think people are really going to uh, take a kind to it. And just that mouth in the, the beginning, mm -hmm. U.S. Army, it's a combination of everything uh, awesome. So I, I, I really think that's going to be one of your best sellers. I'm not sure if you could zoom in on that uh the uh the sh nope nope no i don't know if i can let me okay all right no problem yeah it, it, but when, when you guys take a look at it go to our website and you could zoom in mm -hmm. it's just really dynamite really cool paint scheme that you guys did yeah if you go to, go to the train World website under you have links to all these there and if you go to the lionel website to type in the item number and get to that those images there you can blow these up really large and get yeah. in and appreciate the detail uh, we wanted to do something that was was fun on that locomotive, not too crazy, not you know jungle camouflage or anything like that, um, but something that sort of captured the spirit of, of the U.S. Army and the, their you know their art uh, and their their styles. Um, but also you know a couple of these things on the point of a long train of uh, flat cars loaded with tanks and jeeps, uh, your your troop carriers and. Uh, Troop sleepers, troop train. This will just be perfect for that. Uh, you could these could be the, the start of a really nice military train, and we know how how popular all of those cars are with everybody. So um, yeah, just we needed some more power to put put on the front of that and, and attract the attention. Now, did you guys ever think about selling them as single units or uh, for the A units? It's something we we could consider that down the road. Um, mm -hmm. Well, one of the things we found is with, with F7s, uh, especially Fs and, and Sharks and things like that, a lot of people typically want them in a pair uh, for the A units. B units, maybe not as much, but uh, A units, they like to have the AA uh, set. Um, but yeah, if, if it's, it's definitely something. If, if people think that a single A unit would be uh, a winner, then please uh, write in and let us know. Uh, that's yeah. something we can look at down the road. Very good. And the the couplers on these, um... we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna bring in the the coupler distance on these a little bit, uh, okay. so that we don't have that that massive gap between the units. Uh, one of the things we've done in the past on locomotives is we've used a lot of electro couplers between A and B units, where I don't think we really needed it. Most people aren't using those, and it really spaces them out. Uh, our last run of F sevens, we went with a, a non operating coupler in the. Uh, in the middle between you know between the b units and the middle in, inside of the a units and it really brought that that set just down to, to size and made it look so much better uh, i was really happy to see the way those turned out so goal is to do the same thing here on on these locomotives and close those gaps but only as much as we can to keep the, the minimum radius the same we don't want uh we don't want to uh get people you know hung up on their tighter curves very cool all right all right, now we're getting into some of our, our legacy sets. Um, the New York Central's Explorer. This is based on a prototypical train, um, but it's not an exact model of that train. And the concept here was um, the New York Central's Explorer was a, a sort of a, a trial run of a lightweight uh, consist. Uh, lightweight cars, and it was a, a low-slung, uh, smaller diesel locomotive. It looked a lot like the Baldwin Shark. Uh, it was, had that same styling, but it was a, a much shorter, more compact engine. 
Uh, and the cars were very lightweight, similar idea to the GM Aero train that I think a lot of people are more familiar with. And uh, it, was, it was an idea to try and save costs and, and offer less expensive service, um, but it didn't really pan out that well. Passengers didn't enjoy the rough ride in the cars. Uh, <laughs> it didn't last too long. So we took the same paint scheme, the same concept, and said, well, what if the New York Central went back and, and tried it again, kept the train on the same service schedule and whatnot, but used conventional equipment? Uh, and so we, we beefed it back up to a full scale train uh, to get that. Uh, it's just got such a great paint scheme on it and a, a great, uh, great story behind it that we felt it was uh, worth doing as a set. Um, this was done in the years when the CNO had a strong influence over the railroad, which uh, we think is what explains the, the blue and yellow paint scheme. It's such a radical departure from anything else in New York Central, uh, but a, a fun train. So the set comes with a, a single shark. Uh, and three coaches. And then if you want to make the train a little bit longer, we've got two more add-on coaches available as well. Uh, these are our 21-inch coaches with uh, flicker-free LED lighting, the kinematic couplers. Uh, they'll do an 054 minimum curve. And then the locomotive, of course, will do uh, that and more. Uh, on, on things. And, so, neat set. Qu quite honestly, uh, Ryan, um, I, I, was, I thought you guys had the wrong price on it because you got – three passenger cars and, and the engine. And mm -hmm. it, it's kind of the same price as an AA. So it, it's it's pretty interesting. The the price point, I think, uh, is going to make it very appealing for, for people. Um, and then uh, Donald also had a, uh, a good question. Will the uh, New York uh, Central Explorer have road-specific crew talk? Uh, not road-specific in this, no. It'll have the standard uh, diesel crew talk that we do uh, in, in all of our legacy locomotives. Uh, we, we do vary the dialect a little bit, uh, depending on the region of the train, uh, but uh, not road number specific or train specific in this case. Um, and the, the, the concepts didn't really have a dining car either. We thought about adding a, a diner to it, but it just really wouldn't have been prototypical for the train. Yeah. And uh, Diego, uh, is that train going to be a starter set or a prototype? It's actually going to be a premium uh, train set. So no track, no transformer, just the engine and three cars as a premium train set. Mm -hmm. But uh, really cool stuff. I, it, it's a unique paint scheme. It's, it's really interesting. I think a lot of people are going to jump on this. Yeah, if you like color, this has got it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. It's right in our territory too. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, actually, that train ran in Ohio, but we'll, we'll, we'll you know, <laughs> you can claim it if you want. Well, New York Central. So <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's all anything that's got New York on it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's it's right up your alley. <laughs> uh, we've got two more great sets here on the next pages. As you mentioned, our train sets, our legacy sets, are really a great value. Uh, when you compare the cost of the equipment separately versus buying it all bundled together like this, uh, they, they do represent a pretty good value uh, for a high-end uh, train. We've got uh, two freight trains here. We've got the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie and the Southern uh, and some great uh, freight cars. Both of these GP7s have the same features uh, that we talked about earlier. You've got uh, each set has a covered gondola. Uh, we've got uh, Southern with a roof hatch box car and a PS2 covered hopper. Uh, the PNLE has one of our die cast hoppers and a 50-foot uh, modern boxcar. And then both have our bay window cabooses, which are making a long-awaited comeback here, too. And we'll talk about some of those freight cars and then, then a little bit more individually in subsequent pages. But uh, both of them good, good trains and uh, easy to expand on these, these sets with the cars you'll see in the pages ahead. Yep, and Brian Brian said it's nice to see some uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie. Agreed. There's a if you're a uh, if you're a southwestern you know western Pennsylvania guy, there's there's a lot of gems in this catalog between the Monongahela and the PNLE. Uh, you know, it's almost like the guy who's picking this stuff has an affinity for western Pennsylvania. I, I don't know, but uh, it seems to creep in there every now and then. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, couple more passenger cars before we get into the scale freight. Uh, we've got some more B60 uh, baggage cars uh, there at the top of the page, two different Penn Central variations. Uh, and then the uh, REA looking car there, that, that's the REA, that's the Reindeer Express Agency. Uh, that's a fun one for your Christmas trains or even just your regular cons to sneak that in there and see, uh, see who picks up on it. Uh, usually we save our Christmas stuff for the, the January catalogs. 
but uh, this time we, we added it in here as a to fill out the B60s. And then the, the sleeping cars are what we call pool sleepers. Uh, these were used by the Pullman in service over multiple railroads. So no matter what train you're modeling, it's perfectly acceptable to add a couple more cars into the consist with some classic Pullman green or two-tone gray cars. Uh, the switchover happened around, I'm gonna double check my notes because I'm drawing a blank. I wanna say, 50, yeah, 46. I was gonna say 47, I was close. Uh, they started switching over from the green to the gray but obviously the green cars lasted past that uh, in, on a lot of railroads. Uh, one of the green cars that we're doing in that two pack is the Dover Harbor. Uh, that's still around today. So even on your modern excursions uh, behind the 765 or the 611, things like that, uh, you can throw that in there with the other private cars and, and varnish and, uh, and have a, an accurate uh, car there. So a neat car that's been long overdue to add into, the, into people's roster. Very cool. Also have a return of some of the theater cars. These are the, the first cars we did with the cameras on board. Here the camera points out the back of the train, gives you the uh, CEO's view of, the, of your railroad. Uh, really neat, uh, neat car. These are all more or less fantasy paint schemes. Uh, I say more or less because most of these roads had a car similar to this. Uh, the window pattern might not be exactly right. Uh, some of the details might not be exactly right. Uh, but for the most part, these are reasonably close for uh, for these new road names. The Santa Fe and the BNSF will have our uh, our false fluting uh, deco treatment on the side. We started this with some of the Santa Fe, Santa Fe heavyweights uh, that will be due out here. Uh, actually, they may have just shipped out to you guys in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we got those container that container in earlier this month. Uh, a really amazing looking deco uh, pattern that, that mimics what the prototypes did in many cases of painting a shadow line on there to, to blend in a, a smooth side or a heavyweight car with the corrugated side cars uh, in some of their consists. Uh, and then the Norfolk Southern car is back. That'll be a deeper, darker uh, red to match the uh, other NS business cars that we've done since. So uh, for those who missed that the first time around and want to compliment the, the train, uh, here's an opportunity for you to grab that as well. So Ryan, at the end of the car on the picture, it kind of mm -hmm. looks like it's empty. Is that where the camera's going? Yeah, so the camera sits, it's very small. Uh, the camera sits between, there are two rows of theater style seating in the back of the, the car. Okay. Uh, why the windows are stepped up. Uh, so we model the interior in there and then in between the rows of seats in the, in the aisleway, there's just a small little camera um, mounted in there that sits back in and tucked in. So um, the, the view that you see there in the inset picture uh, obviously, we took that photo uh, outside to, to get the great sunset in there, but that's out of the actual car. That, that was taken with the camera in the car to give you a sense of uh, the picture that you're going to get as the train's traveling around the, around the layout. Uh, so a really neat, uh, neat effect. And uh, Rick actually has a good suggestion. Uh, may, why no sound in the camera cars? It would actually be pretty cool to do the video and also have the same time have the clickety clack uh, of the train. That'd be interesting. Yeah, we could definitely, we could definitely do that. Uh, one of the reasons we, we haven't done it to this point is trying to balance cost. Right. Uh, you know, you're paying a lot for the, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hardware in there. Uh, yeah. when you, we could probably fit it all in uh, from a physical space layout. We, we lose a lot of interior, but mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we'd be pushing a pretty, pretty expensive, passenger car there at that point and uh agree it would be the ultimate passenger car but uh it would be it would be difficult um we also don't put a microphone on the camera itself I, I think that's a question we've had in the past too you know does it pick up audio and uh, the way that the, the board is mounted inside the car we figured it would sound like someone talking inside a box you know everything would sound muffled and garbled uh and we didn't think you'd get really good audio quality out of it uh so we we decided not to to, to go that route uh, in these, we simplified that a little bit and didn't put audio uh, equipment on the on the camera module. Uh, it's something we could add, but we just we're not convinced you'd have a good sounding uh, piece of equipment there. And why do it if you can't enjoy it? Yeah, I I could also give them your cell phone and you could just go clickety clack uh, over the phone. <laughs> but uh, may, maybe next time, maybe next time. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's a war you want to start, Ken. <laughs> Well, you are a good singer, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. We got some freight cars here. We've got uh, the uh, 
gondola with the removable coil covers on top. This is a neat car. Um, you can take these these panels off and run it uh, with a load inside or not. Um, you got three removable panels there. We did two road numbers per per paint scheme. All of them are basically the same except for the road numbers uh, on all of these, except for the Union Pacific. Uh, the UP had one of these cars that they painted up with a special roof cover uh, for company material service. Uh, and they wanted this to be nice and bright so that when it was going through the hump yards, the, hopefully the operators would expedite its movement. Uh, and it, just a, a really attractive car, a really neat paint scheme. So we wanted to include that one in the, in the, in the lineup uh, here as well. And then on the next page over, we've got our roof hatch box cars. Uh, this is uh, a new variation on our PS1 tooling. Uh, sort of a combination covered hopper box car. Uh, you could load the car through the roof hatches in the top, uh, and then when it came time to unload, you had to open the door and go in there and shovel it all out. Uh, for the southern roads here, the southern and central of Georgia, uh, they were used mostly in uh, kale and clay service. Uh, which is used in making paper and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other things. Uh, so when you see pictures of these, they often have a lot of white streaks, heavy white streaks down the side. Uh, in the Midwest, cars like this were used a lot in grain service as well. Um, probably the most famous of them, uh, we've done one here for the Chicago Northwestern. Uh, the Milwaukee Road had similar service cars on their style of boxcar. Uh, but they were used out of the Miller Brewing Company uh, and they were used to haul away spent grain uh, after the milling process. Uh, the, the scrap was uh, hauled off for animal feed in these cars. And uh, so they had a special logo there on the door so that they knew where to route them back to the, uh, to the brewing plant uh, after they had been emptied. And, and they were sort of in a captive service in, in that role. Uh, so some, some neat cars, a different variation. Each car uh, has the right number and position of roof hatches according to the prototype. And then also we vary the doors as well between the different styles and sizes of doors. So you can have an accurate, uh, uh, more accurate uh, box car here. Uh, and just another neat variation. Uh, if you get, get in that Southern set, you definitely want to have a few uh, few more of those in the consist. Uh, and they roamed all over the place too. So it was not uncommon to see those uh, up in the Northeast off of the Southern. Uh, it was a, a, a typical routing actually uh, sent them up to uh, paper plants in the Northeast out of the South. So you saw those up and down the, the East Coast a lot. Uh, same thing with your Midwestern cars. They, they roamed, roamed about quite a good bit. Very cool. All right, we've got a couple more uh, more freight cars here. Uh, we've got the uh, the two or sorry the three bay hundred ton hoppers. Uh, these are an all die cast car, uh, wow. so they're a good heavy piece of rolling stock with a lot of nice detail on there. Uh, we're doing them in two packs uh, with three different two packs per road name, so you can get up to six different road numbers. A lot of popular road names here. Some that haven't been done before. Some that uh, uh, are definitely long overdue. And you, you, you still see a bunch of these cars out in service today. They started showing up about 1963, uh, and there's still a lot of these in, in service, uh, particularly in the Northeast uh, now. They, they, a lot of these cars are transferred from owner to owner to owner. So uh, Bessemer, Lake Erie, P uh, Pennsylvania Power and Light, PNLE, Penn C, CSX, Redding and Northern, uh, all good, good road names here. Uh, the Redding and Northerns especially, you see those popping up a lot in, uh, in general freight trains today on Norfolk Southern. So you don't need a whole string of them. You know, one or two of those cars is, is perfectly at home, home right there on, on that. Very cool. And then uh, we've also got some more PS2 covered hoppers. Uh, some, again, just different paint schemes here, some different road names that we haven't often done. The Central Soya and the Ann Arbor cars, these will have an extra panel on there like the prototype to get the, the lettering correct. Uh, again, some other road names that we, we don't always, always do as often. Uh, so just a nice general all around good car. Uh, and then last but not least, in the high-end scale, we've got the uh, the Bay Window Caboose. A lot of people say this is one of the nicest cabooses that Lionel has. Uh, you've got both the full height and the, the narrower Bay Window variation and some fun uh, and different paint schemes here as well. Uh, the Chessie Safety Scheme, the New York Central's uh, Safety Scheme, Southern Pacific's Railroad Police, uh, the one-of-a-kind Conrail, uh, New England Division Car, Frisco and L&N. You know, just a, there's a great spread of color right there on that page. And... Uh, some some weird, yeah, some some different one-off paint schemes. That I think a lot of people will be happy to to add another caboose to their railroad. Uh, those are all lighted and have an interior uh, with figure inside as well. Yeah, the New York Central paint scheme is really nice. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Uh, then we get into our uh, standard O line. Uh, this we brought back uh, last year. We 
delivered some of these cars and more to come. Uh, and our goal here is to, you know, we know that a lot of people like, like the high-end detail of the scale cars, but when you're running trains around your layout, you know, some of those details start to disappear and you're on a budget, you just want to get a nice long train together. The standard O line really helps you do that a little more economically. These cars are bigger in proportion than our traditional rolling stock. So they look good uh, behind a scale locomotive. They're not overly detailed, uh, but there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of detail on there, enough detail to make them look good. Uh, we've got a couple of new ver versions coming in here. We've got the, the flat car uh, with the I-beam load, which is just a nice looking, looking load. Uh, again, priced a lot more economically than the scale cars with all the, with all the details and two road numbers per paint scheme here uh, on these. Uh, and then the next spread here, we've got the uh, insulated box cars. Uh, again, two road numbers per, per paint scheme and, and some more options there. And then the, although it's, it's more newer tooling, uh, it still fits in that, that sort of size and uh, level of detail with our, our NE5 style caboose. Uh, we've got the Renanga Gila Bicentennial there to go back with the Sharks. Uh, and some other road names that don't uh, we haven't done on cabooses that often and we've sort of overlooked some of those uh, but there's been a lot of motive power in the recent catalogs as we've dipped into some of the other road names more and more recently wanted to get some cabooses out there to match so uh, that's an option see the comment there of a crew talk caboose would be awesome that that's a good suggestion i like that one uh, okay. definitely one to, to take back uh, back to the office uh, and see what we can work out with on that All right, uh, moving into the more traditional side of the hobby. Um, typically, our volume two catalog is mostly scale and high end, uh, but we do like to put in a smattering of the mid-range and starter sets uh, and accessories here as well. I know I've been talking to you for an hour already, so I hope I'm not boring everybody too much. Uh, we've got the uh, our Line Chief 2.0 um, is a neat new system, and we've started delivering some of these locomotives now, so I think people are starting to get it a feel for what they, they involve. Uh, this catalog, we've got the Lion Master Cab Forward and the GP7. Uh, LC Plus 2.0, uh, besides being a mouthful, uh, it is the next iteration of our Lion Chief Plus uh, locomotive. When we started with Lion Chief, it was just a remote control train in our starter sets. And people said, well, I wanna be able to run it conventional and I wanna be able to run it with legacy and I wanna, I wanna have it, every, everything in it. So we've gradually built it back up to a mid-range line. We still have the starter sets, which are just Lion Chief only, uh, but now we have locomotives that have Bluetooth, conventional operation, and TMCC uh, on board. So you can run this with your transformer, you can run it with the universal remote or the app, you can run it with your TMCC Cab 1, or if you've set it for uh, TMCC setting, you can use your Cab 2 or Cab 1L. So if you've got it, you can run it, uh, you can use it to run the, these locomotives. The Lion Master series, um, because we've named everything Lion something in, in Lion L, the, uh, it, it has no, makes it very easy for the dealers, I'm sure, right, Ken? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the Lion Master series started many years ago as a way to um, give people a fuller featured locomotive that ran on a smaller layout. So all of these locomotives run on an 031 curve. It's not a full scale cab forward like uh, the legacy version that we released in 2014. It's compressed in, in all dimensions, but it still retains the overall look and feel and balance of the, uh, the prototype engine. It's just a little bit smaller so that it will go around an 031 curve instead of an 072 curve. Uh, but these are also still very well detailed engines, TMCC control, uh, Bluetooth control, uh, a nice locomotive all around. And for those who've, who've been looking for this line to come back, uh, we're hoping to see it continue to do well. Uh, it's, it's, it's often a, a bit of a struggle for, for us at, uh, to, to get the right, the right match and the right dimensions to give you a locomotive that has all those right proportions to it. Uh, but I think the, the cab forward really hits it out of the park in that, in that category. So two prototype paint schemes and then two fantasies, the, the daylight, uh, which on the full scale locomotive is really the fantasy scheme that started the ball rolling. Uh, and then the other, the gray boiler scheme is based off of some of the Southern Pacific's earlier models of cab forwards, which, which use that, um, that style. Uh, by the time they went to the AC 12, it was just a, a black locomotive, but such an attractive paint scheme. We wanted to include it here anyway. 
And then uh, for those who had the Lion Chief Plus GP7s in the past, you already sort of know what to expect in that locomotive. It's just now gotten that much better with more enhanced sounds, more enhanced uh, uh, control features uh, and TMCC on board. Uh, and just to scroll back real quick, if you go to this page in the catalog, it'll give you a, a quick checklist of everything that those different control systems have. So you can at a glance see how all of these features line up and what you're getting in the locomotive. I know it can be confusing with all the different product lines and it continues to evolve. And just when you think you've got it figured out, we get more innovative and change it all up again on you. Uh, but we're trying to, to keep you up to date on, on what you get when, when you get these. Because I think a lot of people buy them and don't realize just how much cool stuff is, in, is packed inside those locomotives. Yeah, and Ryan, just to chime in, those cab forwards, they're gonna, it says minimum curve 031. So mm -hmm. people who really don't get the, uh, you know, can't get those wide turns or a bigger layout at home because they're concerned about space or, you know, they only have a small room. Now you can run these big, massive steam engines on 031 tracks, so that's awesome. And that, I mean, the daylight paint scheme is uh, phenomenal. It's yeah. going to re do really well. Yeah. Uh, we just started delivering a couple, about maybe a month or two ago now, the Lion Master Big Boys that were featured in the catalog last year. So if you want to see, uh, get a better sense of what those locomotives are like, if you're curious about that line, I encourage you to go on YouTube and, uh, you know, Google, uh, you know, Lion, Lion Chief 2.0 Big Boy. And I'm sure you're going to get a bunch of videos pop up and you'll see these running on people's layouts. And I think that'll give you a really good sense of how the engines look and perform and, and fit and balance with other, other scale or traditional sized rolling stock and so forth. Yeah. And uh, Larry just said he loves, loves, loves his Lion Master Lion Chief Plus 2.0 UP Sherman Hill set. Um, really beautiful set. But we got to get Larry a new hat. We got to get him a Lion L hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we do have one uh, starter set here in the catalog, one new starter set. This is our CNO freight set. Uses the Berkshire locomotive, probably one of our best running and best designed uh, starter engines. Uh, really great, powerful, uh, reliable uh, workhorse of an engine. Uh, three freight cars in that. Uh, the CNO paint scheme is one of the uh, sort of oddball. Uh, we had five of these cars that were all in different unique paint schemes, and we, we captured one of them here. Uh, as well as a nice variety of rolling stock, lighted caboose. Uh, this is your set that comes with the oval of track and the included remote control. So it's ready to run. It has everything you need right out of the box. Uh, whether it's your first train set or your 101st train set, uh, it's a, a great addition to your, your collection. And then as an add-on car, we've got the CNO uh, walking braking car. It's got another one of those uh, great, uh, fairly unique paint schemes with the Chessie cat on there. Uh, and the brakeman is motorized and he he walks endlessly back and forth across the roof of the car. Um, so it, I, the only caution on that is if you have uh, low tunnels or bridges, uh, he might get a headache. So you just want to check that on your layout first for clearances. He actually is hinged, so you can sort of knock him down if, you, if you've got a, a thing to do there. You won't you won't break the car. Uh, but this is a, uh, a, a neat one. Uh, question on there, I see on the screen about releasing a CNO Hopper three pack or six pack to match this and the LC Plus engines. Um, I'm trying to remember if we did a CNO six pack of hoppers uh, in the last couple of years, Ken, and I should know that, but I can't remember because I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe in the future you could rerun them. <laughs> but definitely that's one that we, we, we will add coming out down the road. I, I, I like the idea. I'm trying to remember if we've done that one or not, but uh, if we have, you guys may still have some of those in stock. And uh, Ryan, just one more question. I know it's uh, going back in the uh, the Sharks, but will the B unit for the Shark Nose Santa Fe be able to run with the post-war celebration Santa Fe? Or that's too old? Uh, are they legacy? Those were those were TMCC, I believe, correct? Yeah. So so then no, if it's TMCC. Yeah, if it's TMCC, you won't get a good uh, consist be between those. Okay. Uh, any of the earlier legacy locomotives, uh, if you had uh, – uh, some of the legacy F3s or F7s, for example, uh, that we've done in Santa Fe over the years. You'd be fine fine on that. Very good. All right. We've got uh, some traditional rolling stock in here. Uh, hopefully, Angela's still tuned in and watching. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've got uh, one of her cars. This is the uh, the bottom shelf of the well-stocked shelf series. Uh, I think, personally, this is one of my favorites of the, the series of cars that we've done with her was this 
the, the well stock shelves art. Um, really neat piece, and I just like the way these turned out. Uh, she does such a great job of capturing that sort of warmth of the Lionel memories and everything that we, that we all have. Uh, so I think it's just a, a wonderful piece. And if you've got the other, other shelves that we've done in advance of this, um, it makes a really nice string of cars there. A lot of, a lot of what we've done and Angela's done for us has been holiday related or, or Christmas related. These look great any time of year. So um, just be, be perfect to have in, in your trains. Uh, and these are printed um, here in the U.S., uh, so you get some really just a, amazing print quality on these uh, these cars. It, it, it does the art justice, which is it, it's important for yeah. us. And I was going to say, Ryan, the the artwork on this box car is just unbelievable. How how far we've come in trains, just the mm -hmm. detailing. I I remember you know back when uh, my grandfather was still around, you know, it was just uh, one decal <laughs> on the left-hand side, and that was the boxcar, and it, it, we sold tons of them, but it was just one little decal. Yeah. Now you're getting this artwork, and, you know, it, it, it's really amazing, and Angela does a great job with all her designs, and so it, it, it's just amazing how far we've come along in the manufacturing uh, process, which you guys have come along and mm -hmm. uh, the whole train in industry. So it's just really beautiful stuff. And quite honestly, I, I think this artwork is just getting nicer and nicer. It really is. Uh, it, it really is. We, we, we haven't reached the, the end of the limits on these things yet. Uh, we keep finding new ways to improve upon it. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a talk of, you know, it's, it's a technology we started with really over here and uh, our factories overseas have started to pick up on it too and, and be able to produce some similar cars uh, there, which is, which is nice uh, because they have a, a much greater capacity for output uh, than we have. But there's some, some things like Angela's Art, the, uh, the Railroad Heritage Series, uh, like we've got else up top here on this page, the Presidents, of course, uh, our, our Veteran Series and our Military Series. We want to make those cars here. Uh, we think it's just that's part of the, the value of those cars and part of the story of those cars. They deserve to be made here in the U.S. Uh, whenever possible. Yep, yeah, adds a little bit of money to the price, but I think that's something that when we can do it, we we want to do it and, and pass that on to to our customers that way. Very cool. So, uh, let's let's roll into some accessories here because we've got some cool ones in this catalog. Uh, yeah. I know we're we're running along on time as I always do with you, but. Uh, <laughs> The band is, is in, the, in the in the wings waiting for me to come out and, and tune up, you know. Um, but we've got some great some great storefronts here. Uh, some of them with a little bit of uh, punniness in the names. Uh, we have, have have some fun here with our, our plumbers and so forth. Uh, I think one of the standouts in this catalog, and there's just no way to do this this thing justice in catalog art. So as soon as we have a sample that's uh, ready to show off in video, we will absolutely be uploading that. Uh, but that's the red white and boom fireworks store uh, and this will have a uh, sound light and smoke unit inside oh, wow. and then fiber optics coming out of uh, holes in the building and the roof and the windows and whatnot so you'll get this uh this great calamity effect of, of things going on things have gone a little bit awry there in sergeant stumpies really uh, and this is one of those accessories you're going to plop this down on your layout and it's just going to become the center of attention instantly. People are going to wow. love it. So uh, we're picking up on the technology. We started with the burning houses uh, from catalogs last year uh, that we're, we're honing now. And this is going to be the next iteration of that. So I'm really excited by this one. I think it's going to be a real fun uh, fun accessory for, for people. So uh, now, Ryan, is this something you're going to turn the lights down low and operate it and kind of to get all the sounds, features, and lighting? Yeah, I mean, I think if you were doing this in a, in a lower lit room or in a night scene, it would just make it pop all, the, all that much more. Very uh, cool. But uh, you know the way we are with lights and sound and smoke. We'll make sure you can still see and hear it no matter what sort of a room you're yeah. in. <laughs> but, cool. uh, but definitely, oh, yeah, if you had a, a night scene on the layout, uh, this, would be, this would be perfect. And, you know, also, yeah, I know there's a lot of fire truck collectors and, and guys like that who like to have those die cast vehicles on your layout. This would be a fun scene. To detail around, set it up, get a crowd of people watching. Uh, you know, it would be a, uh, it would really be a, a fun piece to to have on, on a layout. You can you can take it from here and just run with it. Very cool. Got a couple more uh, buildings there. We've got Dominant Jeans. We've got uh, McCartney's Wings. 
uh, his, his great band after the Beatles. You know, we thought that a, a wing shop was, was appropriate. Uh, and then uh, two really fun accessories. These are not brand new. These are, these are coming back into the line, uh, but it's been a long time since we've had these in the catalog. And going to shows where we had the track workers or the road workers on a display layout, it was always one of those things everyone commented on. Where can I get that? Uh, it's it, you, it's for all the great big things that we do. Sometimes it's the small details that really grab your attention, and these are very much a scale accessory. Uh, unlike the Gateman, for example, where classic Lionel accessory, but the the dude's like eighteen feet tall. Uh, here we have scale figures that are animated on these scenes, uh, working on the uh, on the track or working on the road. So very easy to add into your existing scenery or layout, very easy on a modular layout, just snap it right on there. Uh, it's all self-contained, uh, but just that little bit of motion and animation uh, adds so much realism to, to your layout, a really fun scene. Very cool. Uh, we've got just a couple more here. We've got the frat house. Uh, we had a lot of comments on that. Uh, this is definitely you know your animal house inspired. Uh, scene, you got to get yourself some couches for the front yard, and uh, <laughs> you know a, a few drunken guys sitting in the in the very neat porch. Definitely, you can have some fun with this for anybody who remembers their college days. Uh, we've got the uh, the garages there, both in kit and built up form. And uh, because you know, I know of all the things we've shown, you're like, ah, I just really wish I could see something physically in person. Well, I happen to have one of the garages in the sample. Cool here. These are one of those items that will actually deliver earlier this year, or later this year, I'm sorry. Let me go back and unshare my screen for a second, because we're actually sort of at the end of the catalog for uh, for parts anyhow. Um, there we go. This is the built-up garage. This will be available in both kit and built-up form. You get two of these in a pack. Uh, a nice little detail, very simple, uh, but you can add these to any of your existing houses. Also a really fun one to, to detail. I'm going to do some shameless promotion for my own live my live show here now because, you know, I'm a superstar, right? I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> your words, not mine. Uh, uh, we, we've been doing some Workbench Wednesday features here. Uh, we started one a couple weeks ago. Uh, we'll be picking that back up next Wednesday, uh, 6 or 7 o'clock, so uh, join in for that. Well, last week we started this project. So, uh, this is the HO version of that same kit, but here you can see it uh, detailed up, weathered, and, oh, wow. and open the garage door there. We got uh, got a little guy climbing the ladder in the garage, getting something off the top shelf. Uh, we got some you know boxes of junk and clutter. Really fun kit that's easy to modify. So you can take something that looks relatively simple and ordinary, and with a little bit of work, you can take a nice low cost accessory like that and turn it into something that's a real showstopper. So those are the type of things we'll be doing on Workbench Wednesday. Those are the types of things I, I, I love seeing the feedback on social media. Those of you who are out there buying some of the kit buildings uh, and detail and stuff, or whether in the rolling stock, when I see the pictures, from some of the things people have done, uh, it's inspiring and amazing. And uh, we've, we've all had a lot more time to work on our trains this past year than I think we planned on. But uh, it's cool to see how some people have capitalized on that and done some pretty neat stuff. So. Uh, Really happy to see that see the work that people go into it, and you know, take these trains and make them your own. They're they're not meant to stick in a box and, and sit in the shelf for for forty years. Just get them out and play with them and enjoy them. Yeah, no, you do a great job with Workbench Wednesday. I think it's neat, and people who who don't know you, you you know so much about trains, and you're an actual modeler, which is great. So so you showing people how to do this stuff is it's really needed because a lot of people get into the hobby and it just starts and ends with a train around the tree. Right. So what's really good about trains is, you know, the, the scenery, uh, creating the buildings, adding the landscaping and adding all the features. So mm -hmm. you kind of teaching people how to do it, I think is a great thing, Ryan. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a fun thing. And you know, it, if your kids are going to be home a little bit more this fall than you, you'd like, you know, it is a great way to, have fun with the family, uh, but also it's educational at the same time. I, I have learned so much from this hobby personally over the years that, that things that skills that I have then applied in practical things. You know, you learn how to do carpentry with bench work. Well, eventually you own a home and something breaks and guess what? It's nice to know how to fix things like that or, or, yeah. or you know, fix your deck and uh, electrical work, scenery work, painting, uh, the creative things that they get you to do. It also just makes you more observant of the world around you. And you start to, 
you know, you get in the car and you go for a ride and your, your eyes aren't in the cell phone all the time. You're, you're looking out the window to see what, what the world really looks like and get a better appreciation for things around you. And it, they can open your eyes to, you know, all sorts of different things in science and nature and history. And, and it, it's a, a great uh, outlet into the rest of the world or an inlet from the rest of the world to come in and uh, allow you to create your own piece of harmony in your own space. So uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful hobby that you, you don't have to go outside for. You can be as social as you want with it, but you can also do it by yourself. And uh, I think it's the, the perfect hobby for, for 2020. And Ryan, if you still have a couple more seconds, the sure. American Flyer guys are getting a little antsy. Oh, that's right. We missed the American Flyer. Well, we got to make sure we don't cut them out. <laughs> yeah, I can't cut out, can't cut out the, the Flyer fans. Let me go back to sharing the screen here. Yep. I'm on, I'm on three monitors right now. So All right, guys. We got a little sidetrack, but we'll, we'll get to the Flyer. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go on down here into Flyer. All right. We got some cool Flyer stuff. Uh, did I miss a page there? I felt like it skipped over. Yep, I guess that's it. Okay, first up, we've got the uh, the Flyer Chief Baldwin Switcher. Uh, this is a classic American Flyer design, uh, but it's one that about three years ago uh, got a complete overhaul. And uh, kudos to Dave on this one because he spent a lot of hours and a lot of back and forth with people in the Flyer community trying to make this the best that it could be. And uh, if you've got one of the older runs and then you get one of these and, and run them side by side, there is just no comparison to the, uh, the slow speed operation, the, the silence, the much more quiet motor, uh, the sound in here now. It's a, a great little switch engine that uh, no matter you, whether you want to run it as a, a small road engine or working in the yard, this is just a perfect little locomotive. Uh, so we've got four new paint schemes on here, uh, very colorful versions, I, I should add. Uh, typically, you think of these as an old engine. Um, SMS uh, is a modern short line, not not too terribly far from you guys up there, uh, Ken. And uh, they're up until recently were pretty much an all Baldwin roster. Now they've branched out a little bit, but uh, the 1293 there is one of their classic locomotives, and the the BNO version that we did is also still in service uh, up on that line in BNO paint. So even if you're a contemporary modeler, here's a, here's an opportunity to to have a Baldwin switcher on your layout. And then uh, the Lehigh Valley's early switcher paint uh, scheme, there was always one of my personal favorites. Uh, they had some great uh, different paint schemes. But that one I think was always one of their best. Uh, so a fun locomotive packed with features. Uh, these run on Bluetooth control, so you can use the remote that comes with it. You can use the universal remote. Uh, you can use the app. You can use a conventional uh, transformer as well for, for flyer guys. Very cool. Uh, then we've got uh, a set that uses that same uh, style locomotive. Uh, this is a really action-packed set. You've got the, the Baldwin switcher, the missile launch car, another car with the extra missiles and a lighted caboose. Uh, we've done this a couple of times for the U.S. Army and some other things. Uh, this is the first time we've done an Air Force version of this, uh, this set. Really great colors on this one, and I think it's going to be a real winner. Uh, and anytime you've got one of those missile launch cars, it's, it's bound to be a fun one. Um, I've seen a couple of traveling layouts that people have used those on and let the kids fire the missiles uh, and it's it's a hoot so uh, there's another add-on missile car if you want to uh, carry more ammunition and then the searchlight car there as well as a just a natural add-on into that set to extend the, the train Very cool. uh, we don't do as much licensed product in the american flyer world as we do in o but uh, when we were redoing the searchlight cars doing a batman uh, gotham city uh, searchlight car with the bat signal on there uh, was just too darn good not to uh, not to add that in there. So had to do a Batman. So I, I don't care how much of a rivet counter you are. That's just a fun piece of rolling stock. That's uh, awesome. That, yeah. That's got to be the coolest uh, freight car ever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then we've got uh, some more rolling stock here. We've got the depressed center flat cars. Uh, this is the, the six wheel version of the car. It's a die cast uh, body. And then it's got a, a metal cable reel on there too. This this is probably a, about the heaviest uh, S gauge freight car ever produced. I think now, someone will now fact check me on that and correct me. But uh, good grief, this thing weighs a ton, um, and it's a, a neat car. We've got the Roebling cable, uh, New York Central car there. I think is my my personal favorite of the ones we did. But uh, neat car that we haven't done in quite a few years. So I wanted to bring that back into the line. Uh, and then when we tooled up the the new. Uh, Woodside reefer a few years ago, uh, the call went out for more Woodside reefers. People just can't get enough of these. So uh, we picked some of my favorite things. We've got uh, bacon, chocolate, and uh, beer. 
so that's a that's a winning combination right there if I ever saw one. Uh, and we, we, we looked around and tried to find some paint schemes that hadn't been done uh, too much or if at all by some of the other uh, SKH uh, guys and clubs uh, and manufacturers. So hopefully these are some that you can add to your never ending string of uh, billboard reefers. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, we've got some uh, gondolas with pipe loads. Uh, these are available in two road numbers per car. Uh, of course, the pipe loads are removable. Uh, and then you've got, uh, again, a variety of, of paint schemes there, uh, some new, some older. Uh, the U.S. Steel and Bethlehem Steel, good uh, generic cars for any locale or, or era. Uh, and another fun car. It's nice when you can put a load like this in anything because it just it gives you that, that extra little bit of interactivity uh, and, and fun on the layout. So uh, look for uh, a lot more to come in Flyer uh, in 2021. Uh, that'll be a, an anniversary year for American Flyer. So we're hard at work on those catalogs now. Uh, I'm not going to let any secrets out, but I am going to say that there will be something that shows up in that catalog that will make a lot of people you know, happy to see. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll get a few smiles out of the American Flyer guys and a, a bit of a surprise for you in volume one of next year. Uh, and so you've got that to, that to look forward to. Very cool. No, I think that's going to be awesome, and I'm I'm happy to see a lot of flyer guys on here. They were kind of uh, rooting for you, you're, you to go over the product. So good. Well, I'm glad we didn't. I'm glad we didn't. We didn't skip over it because it's <laughs> it, it's good. We, want, we do want to try and keep keep the, the SKH community as happy as I can. That's it. That's it. And we we got to a bunch of questions, but there still are a ton unanswered and. We have to apologize for everyone that we didn't get to, but we'll do our best to answer afterwards or try to uh, get to you if we can. I'm sure Ryan will try to peek back and uh, see if he could respond to anyone out there who uh, mm -hmm. the question was unanswered. But we, we mostly got everyone unless it was a little too complicated for us. But um, I thank you so much, Ryan, for showing up today. I know you're a Grammy-winning artist, Ryan Kunkel. Now <laughs> that, that that is that is true. I've uh, I got a gig later on tonight, so I got to get myself <laughs> ready. And, uh, there you go. You know we're gonna we're gonna do it upright. Got the guitar here. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's gonna gonna meet up and and uh, get standing <laughs> here pretty soon. But no, thank you, Ken. Uh, this is a wonderful thing that you do not just with Lionel, but with all of us doing the virtual NMRA show last, last week was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, both from me able to participate, but also then uh, you were, you were kind to me this time and let me go early so I could sit back and enjoy it for the rest of the evening. Uh, yeah. That's when I finished the garage, actually uh, <laughs> while I was watching that. Um, it's, 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 it's fun to have a foot in both sides of the one foot in the stage, one foot in the audience, as we yeah. in the show business uh, say. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for doing this. I think it's a great way to reach a lot of people. And, uh, it looks like tonight was a great success getting it out on multiple platforms at the same time too. So, uh, for those who aren't Facebook subscribers and whatnot, this is a, this is a great thing and, uh, something I hope we can continue to do and, and look at, uh, down the road. If there's nothing else we're getting out of this year, it's, we're all getting better at figuring out how to connect in new ways. So, uh, let's keep that, keep that happening. And, uh, and, and onward and upward. Um, any questions that we didn't get to because I'm a blabbermouth and don't shut up? Uh, that's uh, sorry about that. Yeah, we'll definitely look at comments. Please also send us emails at Lionel. Use our talk to us at lionel.com. Uh, and then they do send emails to me. Uh, if you, you can either call to my intention or not, they know how to route those product suggestions or questions. Uh, and our, our, our call center staff is, is there and happy to help. Uh, it's been an interesting year for them too, and, and uh, a bit, bit short staff with everything and a bit overwhelming at times, but they do an amazing job of trying to keep up with everything. Uh, so feel free to, to call or email, uh, talk to us at lionel.com, 1-800-4-LIONEL, uh, and we will do our best to get uh, get everything out to you and answers out to you as quickly as possible. Yeah, and I want to say, Ryan, thank you so much. And I hope you don't get too big with uh, for for us with your uh, uh, guitar playing and singing. And I, I really appreciate you having uh, you come on the show and just talk about trains. It's always a pleasure with you. And thank you for the other week. You you guys, 
it, it really means a lot for us for a company like Lionel to kind of be the face and forefront of the hobby, joining us on these uh, social media events. And I, I will say this, uh, tonight we tried a, a different platform service and I asked Ryan before the show, and every time you, you try something new and different, there's always a chance of you having bugs and kinks, which, you know, earlier you saw us had a, a, a minor hiccup, but Ryan is gung-ho. He's like, let's try it. So, so today was the first time we were able to stream on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So we're, we're really trying to capture the biggest audience possible. And Lionel has been a, a great supporter with that, with Ryan and Mike Phillips, who, who kind of does all the marketing uh, at Lionel. Your, your team is just so excellent and always wants to push trains into the, the next frontier. So I, I really appreciate it. And tonight, it, I think it was a great success because I, I do see people from uh, the YouTube channel commenting and I didn't even promote it on YouTube because I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. So it, it's nice that the YouTube people are are able to get on it because I, I know some people, they don't have a Facebook account. They, they only want to watch it on YouTube or uh, usually we post it later. But this kind of gives that feel where the YouTube people could comment, the Facebook people could comment, and you know, hopefully we'll we'll get some other ways to access more people later on. But we really appreciate having you on, Ryan. Well, Ken, you are you are way too kind. We appreciate it as well. Um, you know, 120 years for Lionel. I, I don't remember how long it's been for for you guys, but shoot, you're an institution in this business too, uh, just as much as as we are. So. Uh, this is a, uh, a wonderful partnership. We value this uh, tremendously. Uh, and you're, you're one of the great ones at showing how to continue to innovate uh, and keep this, this business and this industry fresh. Um, so from, from not just me but from, and Mike, but everybody back at the Lionel office uh, who worked so hard to allow me to be able to come out here and, and make this easy. Uh, I can't say enough things uh, about all of them, and we all can't say enough nice things about you, Ken, and the work you do. So, uh, we hope that that uh, that that helps the the public at large. And you guys all got a chance to get a little bit deeper into the catalog today, answer a few questions, uh, and uh, maybe drink a few beers and relax, watching the show <laughs> for a couple hours. Yep, we really appreciate it. And again, all these new items in this catalog right here, we're taking pre-orders now. Go to trainworld.com, place your pre-order. Uh, we have to submit our orders in mid-August. So please get them in so Sherry doesn't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so much. Ryan, always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Lionel. Everybody out there, thank Lionel for coming out tonight and uh, supporting us. And Ryan is taking, you know, hours of his personal time tonight to come on the show. So we really appreciate it. Thank you guys and have a good night. Thank you.